Hello everyone and welcome back to Walford Weekly, your EastEnders podcast, where we will be reviewing the episodes broadcast on the BBC between Monday the 25th and Friday the 29th of January 2021. And our little soldier has made it. He's He has made it to the podcast, the host with the most, and more importantly, with COVID, it's Rob! Yay! Hi everybody! He, yes! He got COVID. it! He got it! Also, it was always going to happen, wasn't it? <laughs> Share a house with someone, you're going to get it. Um, I'm all right. I'm absolutely fine. It was. Uh, I've had a week of it. It's been. It's been all right. It's been basically just like a bad cold, effectively. Um, scariest thing was sort of thinking about like, oh my god, how bad's it going to get? Um, and thinking about how much I was going to have to let Alex down if I wasn't here. Because honestly, listeners, he's scarier than COVID. If you if you push him the wrong way, oh. <laughs> Those messages that I was sending to you were just oh my God. vicious, weren't they? Vicious, evil. <laughs> all those like, are you all right, Rob? Yeah. How are you feeling, Rob? You I'm want anything, right. Rob? <laughs> you want anything? You want something from Scotland? Yeah. Was I was really going to send you. A, I was going to send you a gift basket of muffins and fruit. Why didn't you? Uh, because I couldn't be bothered to buy the muffins wow. or the fruit. That's nice, isn't it? No, of course I would have, Rob. If you had accepted the gift basket, I would I'd have accepted it. I probably wouldn't have eaten the fruit, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> you really are a picture of health. I know. I mean, I know, all, this, all, this, all these things that, you know, this week I told you to kind of lay off and not <laughs> oh, do. Oh, honest to God. It's been nagging me non-stop about, like, you. vaping and all that kind of thing. Mm. I'm, I've barely vaped this week. Like, I've had too sore a throat to do it for a start. Um, and... No. What? This Go is, on. This is lies, Rob. Before we started recording, the last thing you did was sip on your tea, and then there was a very auspicious bubbly sound, like a vape, some yeah. might say. My tea is bubbly. What's wrong with you? Are you drinking bubble tea, are you? Ooh, yes. You're so trendy. You little trendy, are right? you? <laughs> yeah, even with COVID. Hey, Rob, I've got some big news. Oh, go on, then. Okay, it's all, it's all about me. Obviously. Um, I've been invited to be part of a panel on BBC Berkshire. Have you? Yeah, tomorrow. <gasps> I know. Exciting. So if you're listening, well, to say tomorrow, I'll start again. Yeah, today. <laughs> wow. Because if you're listening to this podcast as it's released, I will be on BBC Radio Berkshire at nine forty this morning. So it's a very tight margin. If you're it one of the, really is. If you're one of those listeners that listen to it as soon as it comes out at midnight, then one, thank you very much for listening. And you're two, welcome. And two, uh, you know, come join me on BBC Berkshire. You can listen to it on BBC Sounds, and we're talking about soaps because can you believe it's the anniversary of the very first ever broadcast soap oh that's in that's oh i like that that's a good fact genuinely didn't tell me about this this is exciting what's the anniversary i don't know the the guy who (laughs) um, i don't the guy who phoned me said (sighs) it was the 1940s i have googled it and i can't find anything Um, was it the archers or something then oh what the soap the actual soap i'm not sure i don't think it's the archers no um, because there used to be quite a few soaps, wasn't there? In the uh... I thought the Archers was the, like the very first one that was on radio, and then I thought the first telly one was Corrie. Well, I'll find out tomorrow for you, Rob, and I'll get back yeah, to you. Yeah, thank right. you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, do tune in, guys. You can listen if you don't live in Berkshire, <laughs> <laughs> which you might not. Uh, Imagine you can, listen, you can listen to it. On, I know. How dare you not live in Berkshire? The whole the whole population of the <laughs> who UK. doesn't live in Berkshire? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can listen to it on BBC Sounds, which is a very simple app that you can download. I'm going to pull a rating on this. I'm going to get a, big, I'm going to get a bigger rating that EastEnders got this week, I tell you. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So, uh, yes, I look forward to doing that later today, he says, knowing that the recording <laughs> is, is earlier than the actual broadcast. Ruined. <laughs> we are going to talk about this week's EastEnders, and we're going to start off with pretty much how we ended last week, which is Ian's disappearance. Sharon doesn't give a toss. No, <laughs> she ended couldn't up, care less. No, she just ended up staying at Phil's uh, in the same bed. Who knows? But I don't think she did. I think she's... No, I don't think she did. Although, to be fair, it's not just Cheryl who couldn't give a toss. Kathy's literally the only one who remotely cares. His kids Mm. don't care. Bobby's not bothered. He's called the police just more out of duty than anything else. Oh, I think that's unfair. I think Bobby's very worried. Uh, He put his poor dad. He's... I think he's he's more worried than Peter seems to be. Peter doesn't care anymore. I think he lost his allowance. He lost his ever... His love for his his father. (laughs) I mean, so I wonder where he is. Like, is he? We're not going to see him for months now, though, are we? So we're probably not going to find out anything because we had literally the episode on Monday, and then that was it. <laughs> that was all <laughs> whole... that was mentioned about. Yeah, him. yeah. So... so I think it will never be mentioned again until no, Ian's never. return. <laughs> where um, Willie? Do you think? Do you think he's gone off to someone, or do you think he's just gone off? I don't think he's got anyone to go to. Has he? Has he got like any relatives that have left or any? 
No, I don't think he has, has he? I wonder if he's gone like, wandering sh- off to Jane. Whether he's kind of gone seen her. Well, that'd Jane be nice. Is. If he comes if he comes back with Jane, that'd be good. Mm. But then I kind of feel that, you know, now Bobby's back, Jane should be back at some point as well, and we haven't had that yet. So I think it'd be nice if when he comes back he brings Jane with him. I like the idea that he's gone off to see Jane. But um, are they still in contact? Well the last time Jane contacted him was when he was trying to get Mel's affections. Remember, because Jane was kind of interested in coming back <laughs> and Ian oh. just switched off his phone. Do you remember that? Um, oh, yeah. Um, so I did you, forget about that. So do you think Ian might be going there to apologise for ignoring her for the last yeah, year? Sorry, about <laughs> that whole Mel thing. She's dead now. So, yeah, come back. It's, it's fine. It's not quite so important anymore. No. Uh, yeah. Um, I, like you say, it was a very short little story with Ian this week. Um, but I thought it was worth mentioning just because it's kind of fragmented the Bill family. Uh, no one, as you say, seems to... Or at least Kathy and Bobby cares more than what Peter does. And Sharon, I've, I'm surprised how cold Sharon is still being about Ian, especially since they kind of hashed it out last week. I think she's still believing Phil and like Phil has done nothing wrong still. Oh, probably. I mean, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, so, so Monday, she's basically just going around the Vickers per normal, isn't she? Yeah, uh, she's just and... strutting around. How long will she keep the Vic for? That's another question. Well, I mean, there's the thing to stop her kind of keeping it till Ian gets back, is there? Because I think the last thing that Ian's going to do at this point is, like, sort of try any proceedings to get it off her again. However, lo- I, think we, I think we're stuck with Sharon until Ian... Well, I'll say stuck with Sharon, because I don't mind Sharon being there, but she's there until Ian gets back, I think, certainly. Mm. Ian, I think, is due to return <clears throat> in three months, uh, I think, is oh, the okay. time frame that they've given him. Do you think... A lot of people I've noticed in the comments uh, on our Twitter and on our YouTube this week mentioned that they should have given Ian a Julius theme. I personally don't agree, because he's not really left for real he's just kind of gone off for a break and i get that he's like it's a big deal that he is having such a long break because he's i don't think he's really been away quite as long as this before Mm, um i don't know how long is no because he went away fairly recently didn't he i remember him coming back um to discover that the gay bar was a thing I think that was the last time he had a break, wasn't it? Well, that's when he went to visit Peter and he, that's he right, started yes. his entrepreneur. He started reading a book about how to be a <laughs> businessman. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's know, right. Yeah. 35 years of business and he's still trying to work it out. Hmm. How to business. <laughs> I would, I'm surprising Ian Bill hasn't written the book, to be honest with you. It would be, be a fascinating book, that would. It would be a proper coffee table book, wouldn't it, with lots of pictures of Ian Bill just kind of posing in front of all his various businesses as he's mm. had past, present and perhaps future. Yes, yeah, wearing his uh, place, place hat. <laughs> fish and chip shop what, the hat. fish yes an actual fish on his head he's <laughs> yeah. gutted it from underneath and just yeah. put it onto his head just <laughs> a hat shaped fish um other stories this week was frankie and mick and basically everyone was encouraging mick to go and report katie and frankie was adamant that he shouldn't but some new information came out this week that linda discovered didn't it just didn't it just now i've got to say you you might have to sort of go over this properly for me because i, I think fever might have hit me when i was watching this episode because <laughs> i didn't i was so confused by it so now, now let's go over the family thing here because basically what's been discovered is that katie's done this before which i think we suspected didn't we mm, like, she's we done kind it of a thought, few times before yeah well. Now, it looked for a minute like there was going to, Stuart's involvement was going to start here. Yeah, well, Stuart talked about how he always sees the people who used to hover around Katie as teachers' pets when they were younger. And yeah. so that kind of triggered something in Linda to think, well, hang on. So a lot of young lads were hanging around Katie at the time, too. So maybe it's happened more than once. And it, mm. I think the seed was also planted by Shirley. He was kind of pushing the idea onto Linda because Shirley really wanted Mick to report it. But Mick was kind of keeping to his word to Frankie that he wouldn't. And also himself, because he felt like his self-respect was kind of going to be diminished if he did go to the police about it. And that was also a theme that kind of ran throughout the week, because even when he did go to the police station to report it, afterwards he was like, oh, I don't really, I don't really, you know, I don't, I'm, 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 I've been emasculated a little bit. I can't fix this toy for my son anymore. And so Linda yeah. let him kill a rat. Or not even kill a rat, just put a bowl over a rat. just that to kind rat. Of like. <laughs> It's sort of, <laughs> I can't be the only one that kind of thought the rat changed sizes a lot during that very short scene, didn't it? Like when it first appeared, it was quite a sizable thing. 
And then as, it, as the scene went on, it kind of got smaller and smaller <laughs> until I'm pretty sure that he put a bowl over a mouse. <laughs> yeah. My favourite thing was Mick's description of the rat as a cheese nut. <laughs> Great gonna cheese nut. I'm going to get that cheese nut for you, Elle. <laughs> Don't you worry about it. And also, yeah. I was a little bit upset to discover that Linda has killed a few rats in the past using her stiletto heels. Doesn't that's, surprise me. Oh, that's horrible. It's, a horrible. it's not nice. <laughs> it's not nice. But then maybe that's just a London thing. But <laughs> let us know, listeners in London, is that a London thing? Do you to kill specifically <laughs> to kill rats with your heels? Is you that a have thing? A stiletto in a, like an emergency glass box. A rat stiletto. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> if ever you see a rat, breaking case yeah. of rat. <laughs> you break <laughs> the glass and you get the stiletto out and just kill this rat. Yeah. It's a terrible thought. I don't like it's it. It's got like a scent of cheese about it, and then you can just attract <laughs> it and whack it on the skull. What a horrible thought. Stuart, as you said, did kind of then lead Linda to questioning. Well, who we thought was Frankie's stepbrother. Yeah, this is where I got really confused. Jed. I think I, right, so Jed, and this is the same guy who uh, a few weeks ago came and randomly had a go at Mick. And we said, is are we going to see this guy again? If it's pretty sure it's the same bloke, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. Um, so, he, so, so for a start, and then Frankie at the time... I don't think really said who it was, did she? Did, did she? she mentioned it was the stepbrother to Linda, um, and Linda kind of took it upon herself then to kind of say, oh, can I go to Harry's grave with both of you? And, uh, and he, Harry uh, Harry being? Frankie and, at the time, Jed's brother, their younger brother. Younger brother, right, um, yeah. But we then found out that Katie had actually slept with Jed when he was young, because he was quite a young lad. He slept, or Katie slept with him, and he is actually Harry's dad. Yes, which would make him... I think, I think this is why my brain broke. So this would make... Harry would be Frankie's brother, still. Because it's it's still... Um, no, from a mum. It's still but... Katie's son. Right. <laughs> so she slept with her son? She slept with her stepson. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how... Whether it's actually her son or whether it's... Her son from a guy who she m- maybe got together with. I think it's probably the latter. So she okay. got together with a guy who had already had a son, but then Katie slept with him. He then had Harry. So <laughs> right, it was, it's it's Rod's son. Yeah, uh, and it's technically his brother, I guess, because it's Katie's son and Frankie's brother. What a bitch. <laughs> and he then revealed that this is he's not the only one who did it. And, and I must say, that was one moment. We, before we started recording, we both, but Rob and I said, do you know, we really jinxed this week, this January <laughs> thing. Because we said, oh, what a great month it's been. Fantastic. <clears throat> and this week's been a little bit poor. Yeah. But I thought the reaction from Linda when she went, <gasps> like, it, it was a genuine, it was, it was how I felt as well as, a, yeah. as a, watching the, the, this unravel in front of me. I it know, was, that was, it was quite, it was pretty, it was quite a shocker. We kind of spoke about the possibility that Katie probably has... Mick can't be the only one. And she was a bit too expert at sort of manipulating Mick and all of this sort of thing. It's, I think it is going to transpire that a lot of the boys in Katie's care were touched up or abused by her at some point. Mm. So that means that Mick's going to... Well, he has gone to the police. Ultimately, Mick uh, ends the week... Uh, by going to the police and him and Frankie sort of reconcile. Yeah, that was a really lovely moment because he he apologised to Frankie because Frankie was still adamant that, you know, please don't go to the police, please, you know, just, just ignore this all happened. But mm. with new evidence, new information, I think Mick definitely made the right decision and went to the police about it. And, oh, for sure. And, and an investigation was opened up. How did you feel about the scenes where he was interrogated? Because I was a little bit Ugh. disappointed where Music, they... Music, innit? Well, they didn't really do anything there it's like having watched back in the 80s where there was kathy's raped by wilmot brown scenes and it is literally a whole episode where you watched her being interviewed by the police and you mm. saw her break in front of them as she was explaining and we all knew what had happened from her already speaking to pauline talking to arthur actually kind of seeing the scene unfold in front of us but they allowed the time to kind of grow this this situation to the point of view of Kathy and I, I felt like yeah we had that scene on New Year's Eve where Mick was talking to Samaritans but that was just him admitting it and, and realising that he had been abused we didn't really know the ins and outs of the abuse just yet no and you know what's a bit of information over a bit of synth dialogue and 
a few shots of him holding shaking a uh, glass of water. You know, there is no, <laughs> there's no substitute. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was a bit disappointing. I would, you know, I love episodes like the one you described with Kathy. Mm. I quite happily have had a whole episode of Mick just talking to the police. It would have been a heavy half hour, 25 minutes, but I'd have dealt with it because it'd have been good. It would have been good character development and it would have told, and it probably would have filled in a few gaps we have for the story. But ultimately, that's not what we got, unfortunately. Uh, we don't really know what Mick says to the police. We are led to believe, I think, that Katie from here on in is going to be investigated. So it's kind of like, how much longer is this? Is there any more twists to come? Or do we think that this is close to the end of it? Mm. I'd like, I still like an episode with Katie and Mick talking Mm. together because as you say there's gaps that need to be filled in my mind of what happened between Mm. them and now what's happened with katie with other lads yeah i feel like we've got more questions about katie now yeah more's opened up rather than any being answered just now uh it's going to be difficult to see how they investigate it because obviously katie will know that this is being investigated against her now i really hope that they don't do the oh katie's run away and now they can't oh of course they will oh no that would ruin it for me i want katie to because Katie was so sure that really what she kind of done wasn't wrong. And I kind of want Katie to still feel that way and and fight it. To almost say like, you know, she said a few times that Mick kind of lured her rather than her doing it the other way around. Yeah, that's been the accusation. And that's mm. been her sort of go to response. I will tell people that you attacked me, you know, as if a 12 year old boy can probably have the strength to take on a fully grown woman you know but Mix believed her and that's fair enough because you know that's the I think because it's it's an easier story to believe that a boy of whatever age attacked woman as opposed to woman attacked bloke and it's still to this day easier to believe one version than the other Mm. um and it'd be interesting to see that sort of explores and see how easily see how see how that works for Casey because now obviously what's going to have to happen if they're fully investigating this is that the police going to have to go and talk to anybody that Katie looked after when they were young. So it's going to have to be a sort of wide-scale investigation into this. Mm. It depends how accurately they portray this, let's be fair, and think, how much of it we see. Do you think they will go to Stuart for a witness report and then something will come out around Stuart? Because I feel like mm. it would have been the perfect kind of opportunity to include Stuart in this because it would it would explain a lot about Stuart and because it's easy to forget that you know when we first met Stuart he was a paedophile hunter mm. and it would have been sort of like a perfect answer as to why he decided that that was a thing that he needed to do but there's been he, he's had the bare minimum of involvement in this story I don't know whether Katie will have gone for Stuart or anything or 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 what really? I mean, because it, I didn't get the impression that Stuart really was that involved at the care home. Like, I think he was a mate of Mick's, but I don't think that he was that heavily involved with Katie at any point, was he? Maybe Mick would have mentioned something to Stuart to say, like, "Oh, you know, me and Katie are doing something tonight," and and because Mick Stuart has said that Mick and Katie were very close together, mm. so. Maybe there was something that triggers Stuart's mind, and then he, something will come out that he maybe just something that he that Mick had said to him in the past that will, uh, you know, remind him of that he knew that the abuse was going on and he didn't do anything about it or something like that. It's just a yeah. it's a funny old thing. I mean, I hope they do the due care that's needed for this story because at the moment the writers seem to take a a very important story and then and then take it down a really ex- extravagant route. Yeah, um, like the but the Gray and Chantel story. I just feel mm. like that's just been forgotten now, and I hope that it won't just be a really silly over the top story where you're now you're going to see a scene where Katie's trying to run away and the police are chasing her, and then that's the end of the story, full stop. And you don't then learn about how it's being investigated by the police and how yeah, it, it would be nice around. to see all that rather than just sort of take the the most dramatic highlights of that sort of story and throw them and throw them at us with sorts of you know, colours and flashes and all of that kind of thing. Yeah, you're right. We need to see, like, the actual effects this has and how it's all worked out and all of that sort of thing. Because otherwise it's like, what's the point of doing the story? Mm, mm. But, I mean, these tenders go with stories from zero to 100 so often at the moment. Mm. And and they get forgotten and they come back. And and it's just, I hope that they don't forget about the story and they kind of carry on with it. And because it's the Carters, I think I've got a bit of hope that they might. Yeah. uh, We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. A story that is a little bit jumpy the sharky, <laughs> some that? might say, is Lucas and Chelsea <laughs> and Denise. This, and... Doesn't, this doesn't improve from week to week, does it? It's just <laughs> nuts. The story just seems to go from one mad thing to the next. And the next mad thing is that Lucas is now moving into the square. What? In a flat 
that Jack owns. After Patrick made the <laughs> the the quite telling speech of you have to keep your enemies close. <laughs> uh, I mean, and say is- and saying that he saw nothing but compassion in Lucas's yeah. eyes when he was standing over him while he was having a stroke. <laughs> yes, that's all true, as we Ugh. all know as viewers. So God. So we know that that Lucas is being introduced to the square because Chelsea has a plan for him. We knew that anyway, but we now know what the plan is because Lucas spotted Chelsea taking a package off the flower stall that had been dropped off by some anonymous guy who well, had we, been we met, I think we met I think we met the general this week, didn't we? The general came at the beginning mm. of the week. Yes, he did. The uh the general came at the beginning of the week just to kind of remind us that uh if Chelsea doesn't get her herself into gear then they're going to you know, do something really, really Drop off bad. her legs or yeah, something. Really, really nasty to mm. her. Um, and so she kind of quickly encouraged everyone to let Lucas stay on the square because I think Lucas wanted to go, didn't he? Or well, he had. He had disappeared last week and he did, no one really knew where he'd gone. Other it's like Lucas week. is the only one that's trying to do anything sensible with this story. It's like, no, I should go really, shouldn't I? I shouldn't really be here, should I? And all the characters are like, nah, it's all right. Come back. And no one will mind. <laughs> You're all right, Lucas. Carry on. Yeah, just hang around for a little bit. We'll be fine. But they do encourage Lucas to stay. And as I say, Lucas spotted that Chelsea had picked up a package. He went and followed the guy into the car and pretended he knew he he it was very well acted the fact that he was like oh i, I know about the plan <coughs> oh yeah have... oh the plan yeah yeah, yeah. i know <laughs> about the plan yeah, yeah yeah so he must have known chelsea had had plans for him then so what kind of what were the indicators that he knew that chelsea had something up her sleeve for him to do I oh really... because he knows chelsea so well and that's his daughter so he knows all the things that goes on inside her little head i mm. think i assume i don't know it's all mad um <laughs> Yeah, so he's... But what is Chelsea actually involved with? Because this sounds like it's some massive drugs operation. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. First of all, she was picking up drugs, presumably to then pass down to other people to deal. Yeah. uh, Which is with the flower thing. Um, But yeah, she's using Lucas as a drug mule. (laughs) <laughs> she's using him basically to smuggle drugs from Ibiza into into Wolford. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert in drug smuggling. Uh, I'd like to make that Liar. on record right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, You're hearing this BBC Radio Berkshire. <laughs> but I would imagine that Ibiza wouldn't be the cleanest place to buy drugs. Surely somewhere no. in Colombia or Brazil. Would yeah, because be... they're, not, they're not known for their drugs in Colombia. No, no, exactly, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Ibiza is where normally drugs end up being. It's not where en- drugs is like. It's not the source of all drugs. <laughs> not that I yeah, know hi- hide source. it in plain sight, innit? They'll never <laughs> think of looking here. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's. I don't know. It just seems a bit strange that Ibiza is the is the destination of choice for your drug smuggling needs. To, to me, oh, but like I say, I don't. I don't have a history. I went to a B. I went to a B for once. Had a great time. Did you? Yes. Did, did you? <laughs> were you? Were you a <laughs> mule? Did... I was. Yes. Yeah. I put them in my teddy. <laughs> <laughs> I just. I don't know. It. It just confused me. I just thought that was a strange destination for them to go. Other than maybe they were just trying to get Lucas if he didn't know that what the plan was off the scent. <laughs> but um, again, why would a very religious man want to well, go to the party island of the yeah. Mediterranean? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> none of it makes any sense at all. Um, it's like, but I also want, I okay, so I get what Chelsea's plan is, I guess, in, a, in the sort of loosest possible terms. But I, what I'm really confused by at the minute is sort of Lucas's motive. Like, what is Lucas up to? Like, what does Lucas actually want to do? Are we supposed to believe that Lucas actually is trying to get himself sorted and is trying to sort of... Because I get, I don't know if we're supposed to think that Lucas is just sort of being dragged along by sort of EastEnders, the, the EastEnders way, and is actually trying to just wants to settle down, have a quiet life and sort himself out. And then he's going to kind of, as he's pulled more and more into sort of EastEnders life again, he's going to then start getting temptations of must kill someone. Or what? Like, I like. It seems like there's two separate stories going on there. I think Lucas did just want a quiet life. <laughs> he just wanted yeah, to go out of prison. That's what I mean. Have atonement because he keeps saying it. He's, he wants his atonement, and uh, uh, yeah, just kind of get on. And he, I think he thought that with Chelsea, it would be a nice, you know, have someone family close by his side. He could get himself through it because, as far as Lucas did know, and Denise knew, and Patrick knew, and Jack knew, Chelsea is a is an influencer on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's so mad yeah yeah yep yeah. yeah, that's right chelsea used the excuse that she is an influencer influencer what Instagram. the hell is an influencer 
Is well, that even a word? Well, it's those people who go to um, uh, Abu Dhabi, isn't it? The ones who are stuck in Abu Dhabi at the moment because they can't fly back because the government won't let them. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, so apart from Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> but well, she's going to Ibiza. She's doing her yeah. influencing in Ibiza. Um, yeah, I mean, again, if, as if they couldn't take this story and make it strange enough, they then throw in that Chelsea is is lying. But she might not even be lying. She might actually... No, I don't think she is. I don't think she even is now. (laughs) Why would she be? There's no no reason for us to lie about how... Like, you don't tell a mad lie to cover up the truth. You just don't do that. That's not what happens. So, yeah. I think she's using the strength, though, that Denise, Patrick, Jack and Lucas are the kind of people who probably don't use social media other than maybe Facebook occasionally to have a little bit of a rant about... Yeah, to sort of post a picture of their (laughs) dinner that night. Um, The other other mad thing, obviously, now is the fact that we we are meant to believe that Policeman Jack, sort of policeman who is that much of a policeman that he likes knocking on his neighbour's doors and showing off his ID because he likes to remind them that he's a policeman. Jack is now letting a known serial killer live on the square near his kids in one of his houses. I mean, in a way, you've got to kind of praise what? Jack. You've got to kind of <laughs> praise Jack a little bit that he's... Why? Well, because, you know, Lucas has done, inverted commas, his time. And so he's got... No, his, he hasn't, though. He's got this is the mad thing. He's got his How release. has he done his time? <laughs> he's got his release. He's supposed to be in prison for the rest of his life. He's he done, has not done his time. His good behaviour has got him out of prison. Oh, what, he's, like five years ago when he tried to escape? <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a model prisoner. He's prayed every day. He's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> everyone everyone loves him in prison. Everyone was like, yeah, get him, let him go out. And so Jack, Jack's, Lucas, one those, Lucas. <laughs> Jack's one of those people who's given him a second chance. He's getting a second, well, a third, maybe a fourth, a fourth chance. Uh, you know, Lucas has allowed that. I'm saying mad. this tongue firmly in cheek. It's absolutely mad. It makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> Some really awful news. And if it's tr- if this isn't a lie and Lucas is telling the truth, which I'm presuming Lucas <gasps> is, yes. is a terrible thing to do. Writers, so randomly as well. Is that Jordan, so randomly. Jordan, his son, has died from a drug overdose. Jordan, what? a wonderful character. Someone they could have easily brought back for this story as well. And they've they've killed him off. Off mad. screen, of all Absolutely things. mad. Absolutely mad. Last time we saw Jordan was uh, a few years back when he came and like randomly landed on the, on the square and was giving Denise problems. And then he sort of just disappeared, didn't he? Yeah. Do you think this is a good idea or a bad idea? I personally I just, think well, I don't see terrible. what it, I don't see what it achieves. Absolutely nothing at all. It's a just it was just a and what made it worse it was just a passing comment. Yeah. Really, that's all it, it was. Makes no sense. Luke and 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 Denise literally just went oh boo hoo for about five minutes and was like okay then moving. over it yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's the legacy of Jordan. I just. I can't believe that they did that to it that was, character. Honestly, like I was kind of just like, what's out there watching it? I was sipping my tea, so sort of casting one dispurging eye over the screen because of how <laughs> ridiculous it all was. And then sort of just stopped and was like, what, wait, what? 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 You've killed off Jordan? Like, mm. it was just like, what? Why? I just think it's a terrible, terrible decision. And I, I just hope that they do backtrack on it. And I hope this is lucas lying but then if lucas is lying it kind of goes back on my theory that he came to the square for a quiet life why would but, he lie about that yeah exactly and if he yeah, but i don't think he is lying though because otherwise chelsea would then know either way whether he was lying or not surely because he was living with chelsea at one point yeah and then but well, chelsea uh kicked him out because he was causing problems I discovered when I was doing my Chelsea research the other week. <laughs> so Chelsea would presumably feel some level of guilt about that because if Chelsea, you know, if I hadn't chucked my brother out, then he'd still be alive because I'd be looking after him. Conversations that apparently Chelsea and Denise were having with one another on a weekly basis on a Sunday, which were hours yeah. long. Yeah. Did, did Chelsea? Chelsea no never point? found this out. Never thought to drop into conversation. Yeah, oh, by the way, Jordan died. It's just terrible. Absolutely terrible. Makes no sense. And what worries me is that I don't want it to be true. Uh, but and if it's not true, then they can't double bluff us with Tina. No, exactly. I was just thinking the exact same thing. So it's either Tina's died or Jordan's died. <laughs> what would you rather? <laughs> Which would you rather? Let us know, listeners. Let us know. <coughs> Comment below if you're listening to this on YouTube or get in touch with us on our Twitter, Instagram. Details at the end of the podcast. Mm. So I understand, Rob, despite being very unwell and yes. popping those paracetamol like they're Tic Tacs and Smarties. Like I'm Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> you have made a little game just to make I a have. fool on I the have. podcast. I have. Yes. Listeners, this is Internet History. 
Okay, so this is internet history. Now, remember I wrote this with COVID, okay? So if there's anything <laughs> wrong with it, blame COVID and not me. How okay? is COVID? Is he all right? He's all right. He's yeah. kind of tickling along. Well, I've been stuck in the house all day with nothing to do. I've decided to go into the internet history of Walford characters <laughs> and just have a look at their social medias and have a look at the uh, sort of trends that they like to put on their social media. And I have got six current characters that are currently in the show. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you five hashtags that they have put on their social media talking right. about themselves and their lives. And it is up to you, Alex, to decipher which character I have taken the social media from. Okay? I mean, listeners, your aim is to do better than Alex. Okay? Okay. As uh, uh, Whose aim isn't that to be, you know? Challenge accepted. <laughs> okay, so are you ready for your first set of hashtags? I am. Okay. Number one. Hashtag Bell. Hashtags Kings and Queens. Hashtag Pride of Wolford. Hashtag Missing in Action. Hashtag St. Bernard. Oh, I feel like St. Bernard is an obvious thing. Why Who I... is that? Missing in action. Yes. Bells of, what is it they call it? The bells of, um, the bow um, bells of London. Well, if I was maybe to give you a little clue and say bell is a name. Oh, as in Beauty and the Beast? Yes. Gaston, <laughs> no. Uh, no. Oh, yes. is it someone who looks like Gaston? Is it like that kind of tricky thing? Um, I would argue they don't look especially like Gaston, okay. no. Okay, because I would have said Jack. No, it's not, not Jack. Are you going to give up? Uh, let me just take a guess. I'm going to say St. Bernard. Oh, oh, no, who? Um, Bradley had a St. Bernard dog. Or his friend, okay. his girl. Current, e- current character. Hashtag Belle. Who had a, a baby called Belle, that's currently in the cast of EastEnders when she first arrived on the square. Okay, hashtag kings and queens, if I uh, told you that that was to do with chess. Oh, um, oh, Bernie! Bernie Taylor, yes. Bernie. Oh. St. Bernard was uh, Queen Evie's nickname for her, if you remember. That's right. And then she had, her last big moment was at the Pride of Wolford, uh, missing in action because she's never she's never bloody in the show. And Belle was the name of the baby that she was pregnant with when yeah. she first arrived on the square, if you remember. I would argue Pride of Wolford. It should be Wolford Pride, but that's just... Well, well, I'll tell, just, well <laughs> tell that to Bernie. So social media, not mine. You know, I agree with you. That's exactly what I would have said. <laughs> okay, so an absolutely perfect start so far for yes. me. How are you getting on, listeners? Here is your second set of hashtags. Hashtag Miracle Babies. Hashtag Hurricane. Hashtag Loves a Baldy. Hashtag Biscuit in the Kitchen. <laughs> Hashtag BAFTA Eyes. I know exactly who it is. With, with BAFTA Eyes, it must Sealed be... Sealed it. Our Sharon. It is our Sharon. Oh. Miracle Babies. Uh, because the past two kids that she's had, yes. she really shouldn't have been able to have, no. really, should she? <laughs> Bless her. Um, and her miraculous womb. But uh, <laughs> uh, Hurricane Sharon, obviously. Hashtag Hurricane. The very famous trailer. Yes. Uh, biscuit in the Kitchen. That was Dennis. He was having a biscuit in the kitchen. Hashtag loves a baldy, because obviously Sharon loves herself a bald man. Yeah. And um, and then obviously BAFTA eyes, because Sh- Sharon's eyes are their own character, essentially. So well done. One out of two so far. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Here's your next one. Here's your next one. Hashtag Two Face. Hashtag Wet Himself. Hashtag Life's a Gas. Hashtag Spawn of Satan. Hashtag Pigtails. Pigtails. Um, mm-hmm. Life's a Gas. It must be Dotty. It is Dotty. Well done. Yes. What, what's the wet himself thing? When she poured uh, some water over Jim and tried to persuade Dot that he's <laughs> wet himself. <laughs> yes, I, do. <coughs> I do remember that, yes. Um, two Face, obviously, because there's been two actors now that have played Dotty. Oh, very clever. Slightly meta, I, I admit. Uh, Life's a gas because of the uh, the balloon thing, and you know her and Vinny trying to sell off um, like sort of laughing gas as a uh, as a drug, uh, and then hashtag pigtails obviously because she used to have pigtails as a kid and spawn of Satan because she is Nick Cotton's kid. Uh, two out of three so far, Alex. Well done. You've got Six. three left. Yes, go on. Hashtag missing Paul. Hashtag five hectares. Hashtag round two. Hashtag I beat COVID. Hashtag different strokes. Um, I mean, I miss Paul. Surely mm-hmm. Paul Coker, that would mm-hmm. be. Mm-hmm. So then my guess would be Ben Mitchell. Is it Birdie? No, it no, can't it's be. Not She's Birdie. not current, is she? No. Although that's a shame. She should be current. She really should be. Bring mm. her back. 
It's Patrick. It is Patrick. Well Different done. Different strokes. <laughs> <laughs> um, hashtag missing Paul, obviously, because of his, his, well, not son, but basically son Paul um, being killed. Mm. Uh, five hectares. Do you know what that is? Uh, does he own five hectares of land somewhere relevant? <laughs> no. It's a band. <laughs> that, it was the band that Patrick used to be a part of. It was called the Five Hectares. Oh, I didn't know that. That's... Yeah, there you go. Very good. Uh, Round two. That was his. Um, that was that Pat quote, wasn't it? When she slept with Patrick. Ready for round two? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hashtag obviously I beat COVID because Patrick is a survivor of COVID. <laughs> yes, and then had just a like myself, <laughs> and then and then another stroke. So yeah, there we go. That's Patrick Truman. So well done. Good, good, good. Um, here's your next one. Hashtag Christina Margaret. Hashtag three times kidnapped. Hashtag basically drowned. Hashtag just like my mother. Hashtag teacher lust. Who fell in love with their teacher? Oh, um, Bex. No. Bex Fowler. Incorrect. I reckon it's a young character, so I'm going to stick mm-hmm. to that. Well, teacher lust, remember. Teacher Not lust. necessarily love. Oh, it's, um, oh, Christ. Jack's daughter. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, what's her name? I waiting for you to tell me. I'm afraid uh, it's... Amy. There we go. Amy, Amy Mitchell. Amy Mitchell. Yes. So, um, any of the... Hashtag rings a bell. Obviously, teacher lust because she had a bit of a thing for Isaac yeah. at one point. Hashtag just like my mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Jack is terrified that she's turning into mad Roxy. <laughs> Hashtag Christina Margaret. Do you know what that could mean? <laughs> Though, Christina Margaret, actually her middle names. Oh, Christina Margaret. Oh. That's all That's nice, I know. Uh, hashtag three times kidnapped. Oh, well, presumably she's been kidnapped three times. She has, tw- all three times by Sean. Uh, and basically <laughs> drowned. There was a brief story when she when she was a bit younger, when she nearly drowned in the bath, when she was playing with a doll, when someone wasn't looking after her properly. So she nearly drowned in the bath, and she was basically brought back to life. Oh. But I was looking at the storylines online, and it basically said that she did drown. Like, she, one of those technical sort of things, and she was brought back to life. So, oh, so there you technically go. She's, she's died? Yes, just like her mum. So no. hashtag just like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag just like Kathy. There you go. Okay, here's your last one. I'm doing well, hashtag, by the way. You are. You, you're not doing too badly. Mm. Hashtag OG. Cool. Hashtag caffeine gave me a voice. Hashtag I heart Phil. Hashtag silent assassin. Hashtag you're fired. Silent OG. Mm-hmm. So presumably this is an original character. Mm-hmm. Definitely not Ian, is it? Mm, no, it's not Ian. Well, I heart Phil, unlikely. Well, that's what I thought. Kathy, yeah. Kathy gave me a voice. Yes. And it's current character. Current character. Kathy gave me a voice and it's an original character. I bet the listeners are screaming this out at the, at the computer screens. Right. Well, the original characters are Sharon, Ian, yep. <coughs> Dot, technically, mm-hmm. Kathy. I, uh, is it Kathy? Kathy is it like a tr- Kathy. Is it like really meta? And like it's, it's, Kathy. Not it's, ca- Kathy. it's not Kathy. It's not Kathy. It's not Kathy. It's not Kathy. You've missed out on OG character. An OG. Oh, Martin. No. I'm going through all the characters and I can't for the life of me remember who... Um... An OG who maybe doesn't have as many lines as Kathy has had over the years. Who had a high heart, high heart Phil, so she had a bit of a thing with Phil at one point. When? When did this person have a thing with Phil? When they were young. <laughs> <laughs> Do you give up? Your favourite barmaid and mine, it's Tracy. Oh, for... OG, she's been there yes. since the beginning. Yes, yes. Kathy gave me a voice, if you remember, when... When Kathy first came back from the dead, she rang the Vic, and Tracy was the one that answered the phone. It was, and it was all, it was a huge thing because it was the, one of the biggest scenes that Tracy's ever had. Yeah. <laughs> um, I heart Phil because Tracy had that little thing with Phil Mitchell. We discovered mm. you're fired because she gets fired from the Vic all of the time, basically whenever anybody new takes over. Yeah, yeah. And Silent Assassin because Tracy was a suspect in the Who Killed Archie storyline. Yes. And who, Silent Assassin was the nickname that Mo gave her when there was sort of speculation as to who, who might have killed Archie because she, she didn't like the way that Janine and Archie were treating her when they owned the Vic. Oh, Tracy. I mean, you could... I should have got that because... I should have got that because plug, you did a whole plug, episode plug, on plug. Tracy. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was about to say. I did a whole video about Tracy and yeah. 10 things you may not have known about Tracy. Is that, yeah, that you... eleven clearly? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, which now, if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link in the corner of the screen. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. But um, oh, okay. Well, I'm quite upset about the Tracy one, but uh, the rest mm. of them I'm very pleased about. And Bernie, there you, go. you sandwiched that quiz with a very difficult beginning and a very difficult end. I know. <laughs> Not bad for COVID, is it? 
<laughs> yeah, not bad at all. Oh. How did you get on, listeners? Let us know how you did. And please feel free to send both Alex and me ideas for games. I've had some great suggestions, so I've got I've got a game ready for my from the next time when it's my turn, but it's your turn next week. Yeah, get in touch with us. Uh, AlexWolfordWeekly at gmail.com if you want me to play a game with Rob. Or if you want Rob to play a game with me, robwolfordweekly at gmail.com. And that was Internet History. Hope you've got your hat ready, Rob. Oh, don't even get me started. The wedding of the year is started. I mean, as if it wasn't bad enough that I had COVID, I had to deal with this this week as well. (laughs) This was the... (sighs) Most publicised thing I think I've ever seen for EastEnders. Right. They've had so many stories that they've not publicised as much and has been so much more important than this. And we are very prepared for the the backlash we may get for our conversation. Bring it on. I don't care. I battle COVID. (laughs) The long and short of it is, because it really doesn't need a lot of explanation, is that because Callum can't pick up Lexi from school and because Lola, in a kind of strange bitch moment, decided that she didn't want to put Callum's name (laughs) onto the parent pickup list. (laughs) Because Lola's suddenly the most responsible parent that Wolf has ever seen. (laughs) And also Lexi, the most sickly child that Wolf has ever seen. Again, another incident of sickness from Lexi. (laughs) She's always ill. That oh. poor child. Uh, it, basically, Lola says, if you want him on the list, you're going to have to marry him. And Ben's like, well, I was going to marry him That's anyway. a great idea. Yeah, because a couple of weeks ago, I said, oh, I'm going to marry him to Jay. And Jay has mentioned it a couple of times, and I haven't really followed it up, and now I'm going to. And so on a, on a kind of very flyaway expectant that Callum would say, yes, Ben asked him to marry him. Callum was a bit like, oh, I thought it would be a bit more romantic than that. Uh, <laughs> and so <laughs> Lexi and Ben make a huge plan and somehow Lexi was able to get hold of fireworks. Oh, and not destroy. just fireworks. Not like fireworks. It was Chinese New Year. <laughs> what this, you know, like they stood up there. Honest to God, it was like London and New Year's Eve, these fireworks. It was insane. Destroyed London. I, I, if I was an elderly person, I would genuinely think that I'd woken up to the Blitz. It was just Honestly, like... it looked like there was thousands upon thousands of pounds worth of fireworks going off. Very important characters who should have been there weren't. Phil being one of them. Kathy being another Kathy one. Kathy wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but you know, it's happened. And <sighs> and Ben proposed to Callum. But not before Callum proposed to Ben first. Uh, because Callum was advised by Whitney that uh, if he loves something, grab hold of it with both hands. And uh, So he, he got the blessing from Whitney as well, which was a nice scene. That was that was a nice moment in it. Um, so what were your highlights for this uh, story? Um, the fact that it didn't feature on Friday. That was probably the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm sorry. I just, oh, it was nauseating. I, I, maybe I'm just, I'm, I mean, actually, it's no maybe about it. I am a bitter, single, twisted human being. <laughs> You're giving people ammo for what they're going to say to you. Fine, <laughs> I don't care. Bring it on. Oh, honest to God. I mean, to be fair, it wasn't even if it was well, it wasn't even like it was well written. The whole episode on Thursday. Thursday, I have to say, was one of the poorest episodes I've seen of EastEnders in a long, long time. Because it was just, it was, the whole thing was just so sickly. And just so, I understand, I get it, alright, I get it, I get it, I get it. It was trying to bring a bit of happiness. And Bannon fans all over the world were utterly delighted by the developments that came (laughs) before them. I get it, I'm delighted for you. I don't care about Bannon particularly. Wow, I don't know. As you separate <laughs> yourself away from my opinions here, yeah? I got no problem with Balam, uh, but I You're do... a liar! <laughs> no, no, I've got no problem with Balam as in the relationship between them, because I'm all for gay relationships in soaps. I do have a problem with the way that they perceive Balam as in they're about to fall out, oh, they're back together again, oh, they're about to fall out, they're back together again. And that's not something I've not hidden. We've talked about it loads of times on this podcast on numerous occasions. I suppose this is meant to be their ultimate, like, now they're going to be forever together. But do you think it was pandering a little bit to yes. a certain fan set? Yes, I do. I, do, you know what, do you know what I'm amazed that they didn't just put make make the two actors and bubble them for a while so that they could have a really erotic kiss for the gifts to be made out of? I'm amazed that didn't happen. I I was surprised by that as well. Amazed. I, I genuinely thought that I bet you any minute now they're going to start ripping each other's clothes off. They'll have bubbled the two actors just so they can film that scene. I bet you anything. But that's the thing. It, Balam started with this very hot, intense relationship between them. And they've been a very fiery relationship as well. And then this this, this happens. This very 
sugary, sickly oh, no. scene, and it and it, it all ended with Ben resting his head on Bal- and <sighs> on Callum's shoulders as this, as we said, this <laughs> this firework, this Chinese New Year firework display went off in in the in the background while you saw the silhouette of them together. Oh. Where did these fireworks come from? <laughs> how has a schoolgirl arranged a firework display in the short amount of time that Lexi had? How has she managed to arrange the, this really expensive looking firework display well, there was in a, a short amount of time? There was a guy there and there was a scene where... What where, guy? Where Lola... Not Lola. Lexi says to this guy, you're not going anywhere. And he was the fireworks expert. Oh, I thought he was like some guy from the media. I thought she managed <laughs> to like rope in like BBC News or something. Digital spy in the Metro. Yeah, I wouldn't have been surprised. <laughs> the the school Balam are finally together. Um, and yeah, I mean, what, what the weird thing was for me was that the fireworks looked like, and I suppose I'm dwelling <laughs> far too much on this firework thing, the fireworks no. looked like they were about five miles away. So yeah. where, where were so they? So she'd arranged that. She- because so, she'd arranged them all to be at the Thames. Yeah. So again, was the whole of London invited to, yeah. this, to this, to oh, this yeah. proposal that, 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 that happened at Cathy's nightclub? Yeah, all of this, sort of, all of the whole of London was prepared. It was like clap for carers, but everyone, <laughs> you know, it was boom for Balham. <laughs> boom for Balham. Hashtag yeah. boom for Balham. <laughs> this wraps this wraps up this kind of relationship between. Oh, them. does it hell us like? Well, Who's? I mean, right. So when's when's Callum dying then? Well, no, that's this, what uh, do this I mean. Is my question: clearly. What happens now? Because they're not going to leave them to be happy for very long. No, Callum's going to be dead by the end of the year. <laughs> Do you think that's what's going to yeah, happen? Yeah, convinced. Callum's going to be dead by the end of the year. I can tell you that for nothing. Oh, right. Okay. How, how Do you think he dies at the hands of Ben? Oh, it'll be horrific. No, I imagine <laughs> Phil will be involved somewhere on the line. What, do you think Phil... Because Callum still has that secret where he betrayed yeah. the Mitchells. So that'll all come out and then some big revenge. For Probably D.I. Gaffney will run him over on his wedding day or something. <laughs> some angst-filled, uh, horrific twist of fate will result in Callum dying on his wedding day and the pair of them will get married via a hospital vigil and Phil will be sat there on the sidelines crying but looking as that but look but knowing full well that he's partly responsible for Callum's death yeah but he'll and get away all, with it yet again and then it'll all blow up at Christmas when Ben finds out the truth um, this is <laughs> this is all the... <laughs> and he'll blame Ian and then he'll try yeah. to poison Ian <laughs> yeah yeah we'll go all around in circles all of that yeah all oh, right okay so um you've probably upset a lot of people or we both have probably sorry. for the last five all right. ten minutes let me say all right let let's, me get let's this, say something right. positive about what oh, no, i will say i will say some um yeah all right so <laughs> no I'd say, i'll be serious for me it was all a bit sort of sickly but i know that balam does have a huge amount of fans and support i don't wish to ridicule any of you whatsoever you know I'm, and i'm sure it was actually all balam fans have been waiting for this really, really ultra romantic, and, and let's be fair, it's not like they did it by halves, did they? They went full out for this for this thing. It was basically that that, that was basically the A story for the whole episode, wasn't it? <laughs> but this is another thing. They it was the same episode where Mick went to the police. Yeah, it was the same episode. Yeah, and so you know it's different it's different moods in one episode. That's texture for you, yeah, isn't but it? it, it it dampened the Mick story. Oh. And we're all meant to be we're meant to be like gunning for this story and they decided to if they were gonna do this whole wedding proposal thing, I would have much rather they just made it and <laughs> yes, I'm about to say this, a whole episode about no. Balan. But because I... it would have it would have been fine because then it would have just been this this one little isolated episode and it was self contained and it could have just been the story of the proposal of Ben and Callum. But it wasn't. It was. It was as well as the Mick thing, and it 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 fizzled out the Mick story, which is one of my complaints I made earlier, which is that they didn't do, they didn't explore it further, and the reason they didn't was because they spent so much time on the carry on that was the Ben and Callum proposal story. I mean, it was what it was, and do you know what the mad thing of it as well? So I was looking on social media, and loads of people say, "What a strong episode that was." I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So, you know, our opinion doesn't really matter for anything in the grand scheme of things. If it was, if it was wildly enjoyed, then it was wildly enjoyed. It doesn't matter what we think. You're absolutely right. And we need to emphasise this to any listeners out there, because a lot of people tend to get quite upset with sometimes the comments we make. And you have to remember, this is just our opinion. This Who is cares just, what we think? Yeah, we, we are nothing in the grand scheme of things, in the cogs. All right, that we're not is, paid for this. It's yeah, all right. In the EastEnders world. So if you think differently to us, please do comment and let us know why you think differently. We do not mind. No. However, one story that I expect 
everyone to agree with me with <laughs> is Jay, Honey, and Billy, and the ridiculousness of Billy right. having you... any kind of power oh, yeah. over how he feels about Honey and how what Honey should do with her life. He loves that Janet line, doesn't he? It's a, tw- a second time he's used that. Oh, yeah, it's really sick he keeps bringing that up as well. Because he's, that... I don't understand why he's used it twice now. He loves that line. And oh. Jay was just as offended the second time as he said it the first time. Yeah, but and then he hit him as well. I mean, well, we, we're jumping here because we must also remember that Billy and his market stall, let's, let's continue the saga that is his money-making scheme, his money-spinning scheme. He bought a teapot this week. Um, and he's relying on all worth of thousands his rent. of pounds. He saw it on Bargain Hunt, and he <laughs> he's this 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 polka dot teapot with a mouth of a duck on the front of it, and he he is penning his whole rent for that month on selling that teapot to passers by in the Wolford Victorian Market. <laughs> this tat market that Billy's got at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> he, he like he's like you say he's generally pinning all his hopes on the fact that some somebody from Dickinson's real deal is going to come walking through Walford and realize what a gold mine Billy has in cha- that is in charge of. It was just, oh Billy was just a caveman this week. It was awful. Oh, he's like, so frustrating, and it just annoyed me so much that Lola at the beginning agreed with him. She said it was like oh what you're doing. Is yeah, Lola's of- opinion soon changed, didn't it? But then at the end of the week, yeah, she was like oh just leave him alone, Dad. You. Pops. If I'm a, if I can get over it, you can. Yeah, yeah. If I can get over it, Lola. Yet I mean, again, making it about yeah, herself. Lola caring as much as she does about everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I just it made me so angry, and it's just the same week in week out with Billy thinking that he can just pull his weight around and tell Jay that he's not allowed to date Honey, almost like a mother to you. She was like looking after you. Although we were corrected, we must oh, bring this up. Oh God, will we? God, will we correct it? <laughs> And, and to be fair, they were right. That, um, no, honey, absolutely right. Honey didn't bring up Jay, um, but it, it was like he was. She was like a mother to him. So is what we yes, should have said. That's so, what we meant. And and so that's an argument that Billy is still bringing up to that. You know, Honey is a mother like figure to Jay, and so what they're doing is re- really weird and wrong. Milf. Yeah. Are we meant to agree with Billy? I just can't. Oh, agree I don't. With it. No, of course we're not. Because because no, because we're supposed to look at them and realise how good they are together and to be fair not a few weeks ago you were well on board with this I still am I like Jane yeah. Honey I like no, their there relationship you there you go then yeah it's fine Um, and yeah we were, like you said we were corrected and quite right because you know she's not Honey actually came along quite late into Jay's sort of character arc when he was younger um, and then all of a sudden was like one of the best new things that had happened today for a while, I think. I mean, one nice thing that we did get this week, we haven't had for ages, Janet was back this week. We haven't seen Janet in ages. Yeah, well, I love a bit of Janet. Janet's lovely, bless her. Yeah, she's, she's drawing. Great. Her DJ and, skills. Uh, yeah, bless her. Love Janet. Um, basically, this week was essentially uh, Billy just acting like a caveman and deciding that his feelings above all else yeah. were the ones that needed to be considered. And I'm really glad, actually, that Honey saw him behave the way that he did at the end of the week by smacking Jay and saying all of these really horrible things mm. and just acting like a complete and utter moron. And Jay, um, an absolute gentleman, as always, even though Billy was saying all these things, even though Billy hit him, he still took, he still respected Billy's opinion and did nothing about it. He just well, stood yeah, but, there and took yeah. it and was like, OK, fair enough, Billy, you've had your rant. And that's, I think, was frustrated Billy even more because Jay's not retaliating. He wanted a he wanted a fight, didn't of he? Course he, wanted, he, did. he wanted Jay to sort of go at him, just so it sort of vindicated Billy's opinion of him. Yeah, exactly. And he can't that. do that. Mm. And he broke his teapot. <laughs> and he broke his teapot. He did. He smashed his teapot dramatically on the ground. <laughs> what would David Dickinson Stormed say? off. I oh, know. That's not the real deal. That's not the real deal. <laughs> One last story then, and it's another love story, or is it potentially? We don't know. It could be. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But Gray. <laughs> Grey oh, has yeah. got intentions for Whitney. After discovering that Chantel had seen a family solicitor because he Ooh. bumped into Grey and said, How's... <laughs> sorry yes, about fit, the news about Chantel. Fit family solicitor was back this week. He was. He was. And Grey has felt betrayed now by Chantel. The final death nail is in the coffin I of mean, Chantel's honestly, relationship. It's, it's admirable, really, how surprised Grey is whenever he discovers any sort of thing that Chantel was thinking of deserting him. It's amazing. Like, he's genuinely surprised <laughs> whenever he discovers any of this. It's amazing, really. I know, but he knew that she was doing it. Uh, he, he he looked into her internet history and, 
you know, it was it was obvious that he was doing it. So it seems a bit strange that it came as a bit of a shock to him again. Maybe he kind of put it at the back of his mind because he what had happened to Chantel, what he, his hand had at it, and so he still felt a bit remorseful, a bit angry, a bit sad about what he had done, and he so had those feelings. But that was it. He, he he's given up on them now, and he's yeah. now pushing himself a little bit onto Whitney. And where first of all Whitney was a little bit charmed by it and felt quite safe i think she sees that gray is almost going a bit too quickly toward her affections yeah i mean this is whitney we're talking about here someone who acts not like she was trying to snog gray not so long ago and even whitney's kind of like do you know what i think we should slow down a little bit (laughs) so (laughs) basically says that this is going to happen at some point probably quite soon um because gray basically spends the week trying to get whitney drunk like (laughs) essentially like they had some of the biggest glasses of wine I've ever seen in my life um, on Friday's episode. And um, after having had three bottles the night before, and so... All Gray's to herself. At, as all well. to herself, apparently. <laughs> so Grey's immediate response to that is, oh, I know, I'll get a drunk again when she's got a hangover from wine. I'm mm. sorry. For realistic stakes, for a start, if you're hungover from wine, the last thing you want the next day is another glass of wine. Oh, it would make you gag, wouldn't it? That's especially not red wine. Territory. Are you having a oh, laugh? God, especially yeah. red wine. I mean, Ugh. your mouth, especially if you're... I know Whitney's not a smoker, but if you're a smoker and you drank red wine, your mouth is literally <laughs> like, like the desert... Like the there, desert I sand. I know, same. You're just like, <sniffs> when you wake up in the morning. It's not great. It's have, not good. Have you ever woken up in the morning and kind of leant over to have a what you think is a can of Coke? Oh, yeah, and, and then it's you wine. Pour it down your, well, no, it's not wine. It's literally what was an ashtray the night before. And so you've got <laughs> a mouthful of cigarettes yeah. in your mouth. Yeah, done that. Yeah, yeah same. Yeah, yeah. So have I. Yeah. Let us know if you've done it too. God, we're, are we classy? <laughs> we are classy birds. <laughs> Grey is showing a little bit of enviousness toward Whitney's friendship uh, toward Cush as well. Did you see yes, that? Yes, yes. And also, did you spot Cush and Whitney? Is that a thing that's going to... That's, uh, see, what do you think? This is what's worrying me because I uh, there's theories thrown out there that there is a Cush and Whitney about to happen. Oh, really? Yeah, and it could possibly be the exit story for Cush. <laughs> Whitney was just the last straw for Cush. <laughs> no, well, it might be the last straw for Grey, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. Oh, don't you dare. I'm afraid so. There is don't a... you dare. <laughs> Grey killing Cush, is that what you, is that what you mean? I, I no. couldn't possibly mention it. I will riot. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> there's, there's theories going out there right now. <sighs> as long as there are any theories. Uh, yeah, but theories, you know, what happens theories like, are, especially with EastEnders at the moment. Yeah, that's true. Um, no, I'm not having that. I will I will kick off if that's what happens. God, it's the sort of thing... You, no, because this is turning Grey into sort of a serial killer. Yeah, and it's, it's completely the wrong direction for this story to be going in. I don't absolutely. like it. Mm, I don't like it at it's, all. It's ruined any kind of uh, ethos. Ethos? Is that the word? Pathos. Thank you. <laughs> and it, Well, it's been kind of waning now anyway, and it's just... Well, if they were to take that route, I think is just ruined. It basically they might as well not have done the Chantel story and just had Grey come into the soap as a yeah, serial as a psycho, killer. as yeah. a psycho. Because that serious. would also mean that both of Carmel's sons will have been murdered, and it means that there's two serial killers on the square at the moment, Lucas and Grey. But don't you think that's a bit weird as well? That dynamic. Yes. That's that, like a serial killer should be almost like a murder or a death on a t- on a soap. It should, rare. Be a, it should be rare. It should be a big deal. And both- not just, yeah, not just kind of shrug. Yeah, there's a serial killer on the square. Of course there is. Yeah, like, yeah. no. They're, they're staying with the people they tried to kill. <laughs> um, I do think Cush and Whitney are quite well suited, though, because you've also got to remember, of course, that Cat and Cush aren't a thing anymore. Cush is single. Like, the funny thing with Cush is, is that every relationship he's had for the last couple, with Denise and with Cat, it, there must be something about that character. They just work. Kush and someone just work really well yeah. as a relationship. It's yeah. just a, so it's, which makes it even a bigger shame that they're they're kind of losing. We're losing Kush as a character. Yeah, just, no, absolutely. Because Kush is, like you say, it's one of those characters that kind of just tends to work with whoever he goes to. He's quite an adaptable character in that sense. Yeah. Um, God, Grace a chauvinist as well, isn't he? I mean, I know he's, I know he's not high. He's not a guy, the sort of person that's got a huge amount of uh, positives about him. But he's a chauvinist as hell. Mm-hmm. Like he just looks at Whitney and kind of sees hired help. Yeah, and then <laughs> a woman he can you know. woman he, he he can order around and yeah. he sees everything he needs to in Whitney as well as a potential uh, victim for the future I think as well because she is sort of she's cheerful she's happy she's very easy to manipulate 
And it's he she basically she you look at Whitney and he she is exactly the sort of person that someone like Grey would go for. It's not looking good. Poor Whitney just goes from one bad relationship to the next, doesn't she? Well, it's not even that. She goes from one abuser to the next. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly that. So that was Wolford all wrapped up this week. I think it's time that we read out a couple of comments that you sent in to us on I Ain't Want to Gossip. And you know me, I ain't want to gossip. This week I received an email. Don't forget you can get in touch with us um, with all the details we'll say at the end of the show. And it's from James Hood who asked us a question. He has said, what would your thoughts be if this year's anniversary special, they would bring back Little Mo Slater and Freddie Slater? Also, oh, that'd be nice. Also, I bloody love your podcast and it brightens up my Sunday. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks, James, for that. Thank uh, you, James. Would you like to see Little Mo return? And if she was yes. to return, what would her story be? Do you think she'd get tied up with Billy? It would stop Billy being so hooked up on blooming honey? Uh, well, I mean, I'd like to think that Little Mo has uh, had some sense since uh, <laughs> she was, she went away. And she, but the, her and Billy were quite were, were quite close at one point, weren't they? Well, they they came up on EastEnders' uh, best proposals of the of the history of EastEnders on their Twitter. In ever, yeah. Oh, really? Ever, oh, wow. Yeah. wow. So, um, oh well, I I, I think that it would be nice because, and also, it'd be nice to uh, bring Little Bo back to sort of build because Little Bo was an amazing character. She was great, and she was really unique as well in the way that she was portrayed. Um, and it'd be nice to sort of maybe start to build the Slaters back up again and throw an extra old ingredients in there to sort of build it up a little a bit again because I feel the Slaters are sort of losing their way as a big old family unit so mm. it'd be nice to sort of bring little Mo back and sort of have that unit grow again I'd, I'd be all for that all for that and how old could Freddie be now? I was about to ask the same question I'm not sure um... When did she leave? Because he was a baby when she, I, think, I think he was just a baby when uh, when she left wasn't she? Yeah, wasn't, wasn't it at the end of the wasn't it like two thousand six seven? She left something like that. So yeah. she, it'll be it'll be a close to teenage year. Oh, almost time for him to be a psycho child. Then perfect. Yeah, there you go. Why not bring him in? Yeah, we'd like to see that. Uh, and Amy Hughes says, "Now the countdown begins to see which member of Balan will die first. No doubt they'll save that for the wedding day, though. See, I'm not the only one who thinks this. Ah, there you go. Then so the, yes. the story's written itself. We're all ready for the Balan wedding then." He's going to die in the most tragic way possible. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. What do you? Th- I mean, do you think that it is? I mean, if you look at Callum as a character, like what? Uh, for a start, he's already changed massively from when he first came in. Because I'm pretty sure that being gay has given him some IQ points because he's a lot more intelligent than he used to be as well. <laughs> well, he had to be if he's a police officer, isn't he? Exactly. So he's nowhere near as thick as he used to be either. Since he lost that hat, it's like his brain power has been ex- elevated massively. Don't get me started about poor old Halfway's hat. Halfway's no, no. hat is a friend of the show, and we speak to him intermittently from time to time. Um, he's having a great time in heaven with all the characters from EastEnders. And Callum, on an interview on The One Show this week, which is a UK programme, I wouldn't get too excited about and uh he said that he he didn't miss the hat he said oh you know i used to wear a hat and uh i'm glad i don't have to wear it anymore oh, I was like, how dare you i made you how that hat, that hat? <laughs> i mean it was he is a well as i say halfway's hat was very upset with that comment let me tell you he he phoned us up on the heaven hotline and uh told us a few things i tell you uh, how can people get in touch with us, Rob? You can contact us on Twitter and Instagram at Walford Weekly. You can find us on Facebook at Walford Weekly Podcast. On YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications about our spoiler videos. You can listen to us on Apple, Podbean, Spotify, or any of your favourite podcast sites. Don't forget if you have uh, any ideas for games or just want to have a chat, contact us at robwolfordweekly at gmail.com or alexwolfordweekly at gmail.com. We shall be back next week. I shall hope hopefully be better by then and alex hopefully still won't have covid until then goodbye bye everyone Hope you got your Babadu, hat. Babadu, 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 ba. Go on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>